I'm the calculus professor and today we'll be talking about volumes by slicing. Now let's look at problem number 13. In problem 13 we'd like to find the volume of the solid whose base is the triangle with vertices at 0, 0, 2, 0, and 0, 2 and whose cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis are semicircles. Okay, so before we start the problem, let's just draw a little picture, see what's going on. Um, so here's my x and y axis. We've got three points. We've got 0, 0, which is the origin. We've got 2, 0, right out here, and we've got 0, 2, which is up here. So we've got this isosceles right triangle. Uh, and that is my base region. Then they say that the cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis are semicircles. In other words, if I made a slice with my knife across this shape that cut the y-axis, then, like, let's say that I made a cut right here, then I would get a semicircle. And if I made a cut right here, I would get a little semicircle. If I made a cut right here, I would get a larger semicircle. And you can start to see what this shape would actually look like. So every cut that I make along here gives me a semicircle. All right. Now we can use that information to get the volume of that shape. Uh, so remember that volume is equal to the integral from A to B of uh, A Typically, I say a of x, but this time we're cutting up the y-axis. And whenever we're cutting along the y-axis, I need to integrate with respect to y, dy. Okay, so this is uh, what we're looking for uh, to find our volume. So first of all, what is a and what is b? Where do we start our cutting and where do we stop our cutting? So we start cutting at y equals 0, and we stop cutting at y equals 2. So we're integrating this thing from 0 to 2. And then the next question is, well, what is the cross-sectional area here? Well, cross-sectional area in this case is a semicircle. So I need to know, all right, then what is the equation of a semicircle? I suppose that the equation of a circle is pi r squared. And so the equation of a semicircle would be pi r squared divided by 2. Okay, yeah, that's right. So it's pi r squared over 2. So we could put in the pi, we could put in the over 2, and then we need to square the radius. So if I'm sitting up here at a point y, what's the radius of my semicircle? Uh, so the semicircle looks like this. So the radius of that semicircle is halfway to the other side. An easy mistake to make here would just say, uh, oh, it's just this function. It's not that function. It's half of that function. Well, what's half of that function? First of all, I guess I need to know what's this function. Well, this is just y equals the y-intercept of that line is 2. The slope is minus 1. So that's just the line 2 minus x. Uh, and I don't want 2 minus x because that would give me the diameter. I want half of that, which would give me the radius. So my radius is 2 minus x divided by 2. So I want 2 minus x divided by 2. That's the radius. But remember, it was pi r squared over 2. Oh. When I uh, made a mistake, let's correct it. I don't want a function of x in here, correct? I want a function of y. I'm integrating this thing with respect to y, so I need a function of y, not a function of x. Very easy mistake to make, and so what do I do? I solve this thing for x. If I do that, I get y minus 2 is equal to negative x, and then I solve this 
for x and I get that 2 minus y is equal to x. So uh, I don't want a 2 minus x in here, I actually want a 2 minus y. Everything would have worked out fine, but that's by chance and not by skill. Uh, you definitely need y's in here when you're integrating with respect to y. And so now we've got an integral that will get the job done for us. Okay, so let's simplify this a little bit, uh, get it into a form that it's easy to take an antiderivative. So this is equal to, I've got a pi over 2 here. Uh, I could just pull that out of the integral. And actually on the bottom, I've got a 2. And I'm going to square that 2. When I square the 2, I'll get a 4. I can pull that 4 out as well. So all together, I could pull all the constants out and get a pi over 8. 2 here, 4 here, and then the pi on top. Then I have integral from 0 to 2. And now I just want to square this guy, which would give me 4 uh, minus 4y uh, plus y squared dy. Let's take an antiderivative. I've got my pi over 8. Uh, antiderivative of 4 is 4y. Antiderivative of negative 4y is minus 4 uh, over 2y squared, or just 2y squared. And antiderivative of y squared is 1 3rd y cubed. All of that's evaluated from 0 to 2. All right, let's plug things in. When I plug things in, I still have my pi over 8 sitting out here. When I plug in 2, I get 2 times 4 is 8. Uh, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is minus 8. And 2 cubed is 8 over 3, plus 8 over 3. And then I plug in 0 for everything, and I get 0 minus 0 plus 0. So that's it. And now I have an 8 minus 8. I can do that one. And then I just have 8 thirds times pi over 8. You multiply 8 thirds by pi over 8, and you just get pi over 3. So the volume of the shape that we formed up here should be pi over 3.